hope we had it fixed last week. Hello.
May our praises rise to our heavenly glory. Amen. Amen. For Easter, which reminds us that love is our greatest challenge, we like to play. For gathering today in this sacred space, we like to play. For the opportunity to be together as a community, to remember the past, to plan for our future, to be alive in our present. We like to play. Reading from 1 Peter, the first chapter. To God's elect, who have been chosen according to the foreknowledge of God the Father, through the sanctifying work of the Spirit, to be obedient to Jesus Christ and sprinkled with his blood, grace and peace be yours in abundance. Praise be to God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade. This inheritance is kept in heaven for you, who though through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. In all this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you may have ha had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. These have come so that the proven genuineness of your faith, of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Though you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy. For you are receiving the end result of your faith, the salvation of your souls. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you this evening for your very personal love for us. Open our eyes so we can envision your plans for us. Awaken our hearts so we can better understand your love for us. Increase compassion in us so we can help you to change the condition of the world around us. Nothing matters more in life than the oneness with you. Amen. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you, O oh Lord. Now that day, that same day, two of them were going to the village of Amanis, about seven miles from Jerusalem. And they were talking with each other about everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed these things with, one, with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them. But they were kept from recognizing him. And he asked them, what are you discussing together as you walk along? They stood still, their faces downcast, and one of them, named Cleopas, asked him, are you the only one visiting Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened there in these days? What things, he asked. About Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. And the chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it is the third day since all of this took place. In addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning, but didn't find the body. They came and told us that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see Jesus. And he said to them, how foolish you are, and how slow to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Messiah have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said and all the scriptures concerning himself. And as they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus continued on as if he was going farther. But they urged him strongly, stay with us, for it is nearly evening. The day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. And when he was at the table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were open and they recognized him, and he disappeared from their sight. And they asked each other, were not our hearts burning with us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? They got up and returned at once to Jerusalem. They found the eleven and those with them assembled together and saying, It is true, the Lord has risen and has appeared to Sinon. Then the two told what had happened on the way and how Jesus was recognized by them when he broke the bread. This is the gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. 
But it was just about three weeks before Easter. And I saw a quote on the internet, and I just had to print it out. It said, if the resurrection were meant to be historically verifiable, God wouldn't have performed it in the dark and without eyewitnesses. Well, the holy scriptures that we hold dear in this church and precious in our hearts tells us that over 500 people did see Jesus after he rose from the dead, before he ascended into heaven, after that terrible, horrible, no good, very bad weekend. Those 500 people included all of the disciples and St. Paul. And seeing and meeting up with the risen Christ changed all of their lives. And it changed your hope for the future and mine as well. It is based on solid biblical evidence that God did raise Jesus up from the grave. God is whoever or whatever raised Jesus from the dead. And generation after generation of people have told one another that story. And so in 2023, you and I can trust that a better day is out there ahead for us as well according to the promises of God. You may hear, have heard about that little classical novel, Little Lord Fauntleroy. In that story, a young boy who was living in deep poverty with his mother here in the United States learns that his father was once a member of a British noble family. The boy's grandfather sends for him here in the United States, and the boy soon finds himself living in a grand country home in England that belonged to his grandfather. And he becomes heir to his grandfather's entire estate, including the title Lord of the Manor. Well, I find a parallel to that young boy's life and yours and mine. Because of Jesus Christ and his resurrection from the dead, you and I have been born with nothing. And we have come through the holy sacrament of baptism to have everything, including the promise of a better life in heaven one day, that nothing or no one can ever deny us. As you listen to me here this evening or you watch out there during these brief moments, on YouTube, you may ask, how did we ever get to have something so good? And the answer, I believe, is so simple. How did we ever get to have something so good as the promise of eternal life? Because God is so good. And even though it costs God what God valued most the life of his own dearly beloved son. God paid ahead for all of us and for you who are watching tonight. God paid ahead with, his, with the death of his own son on the cross of Calvary. 
Ten years ago, the New York Times carried a human interest story about a safe, self-made millionaire whose name was Eugene Land, L-A-N-D. Mr. Land changed the lives of an entire sixth grade class in Harlem in New York City. He had been asked to speak to the 59 members of that sixth grade class. He thought to himself, what can I say to these kids to make a difference in their life? Most of those kids were destined to be dropouts, coming out of apartments in public housing in the depth of Harlem those years ago. He wondered how he could get these kids from those broken homes in the projects that went up 24 stories in those days in Harlem. How could he even get them to look at him, let alone pay attention to what he had to say? When he arrived at the school and stood in the auditorium with all those faces looking at him, with an attitude on most of the faces. Mr. Land immediately put his notes back in his pocket and he decided to speak from his heart. So to those kids sitting in the auditorium that morning, he said simply, stay in school. Stay in school, and I'll help pay for college for every one of you who graduate. At that moment, the lives of many of those kids were, were changed forever. For the first time in many of their lives, somebody put something in front of them that gave them hope. One student said, now I have something to look forward to. Another said, I feel like I have something waiting out there for me. Another said, this is a wonderful feeling about my future. Nearly 90% of that class went on in the next several years to graduate. In this evening's reading, Peter was telling people he met everywhere that there was a future out there for them because Jesus Christ did rise from the dead. And that same hope is here tonight for you and for me and for those of you watching. As you deal with different pains in your life, as you suffer disappointments, as you experience brutal sorrow, as you find it hard some days just to go on. Always remember that God is holding a future out there for you that he held for Jesus from the day Jesus was born. And that future is ours now because God did raise Jesus up from the dead. Amen.
Psalm 25 reminds us, all the paths of God are steadfast love and faithfulness for those who keep God's covenant and decrees. Our church's ministries are extensions of God's love and faithfulness made possible through the generous giving of our time, energy, and, faithful, and money. With that love, let us offer our gifts to God. As God has blessed you, so we ask you to share generously. Your gifts make a difference in many lives. You may give your offering in the offering plate, right at the cross section of the aisles, or online at god-is-love.org slash donate, or you can mail your offering to Epiphany Lutheran Church, 4301 Rasp Avenue, 21206. And we are grateful. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who through the Spirit brought life where there was only death, and emptied the tomb so the world would have the hope of eternal life. And so with those who witnessed our resurrected Lord, those who pray for him to come again, and with all the choirs of angels, we praise your almighty name and join their unending hymn. Oh. in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. This is the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Amen. And now joining with saints past and present, we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. All are welcome at this feast, and just a reminder that uh, Pastor King Blake will be here to pray with anyone either before or after you have received communion this evening.
And now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in God's grace, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Now is the time to get up and go. We will leave in order to follow God into the world. Now it is time to enter the brokenness all around us. We will go to bring the healing and peace of Christ Jesus to all. Now it is time to bring words of hope and grace to all. The Spirit will give us the words we need in every moment. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Oh, 